Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do an unboxing video and main review of the Dynamics frame from Aeropix FPV. So let's start by opening it up and see everything we've gotten inside this kit. So first of all, we get in this instruction a manual that tells us everything we get inside the kit and also a quick assembly guide. So first of all, we get in the four carbon fiber arms. They're located here in this bag. These are four millimeter arms. We get in two silicone coated Velcro scraps, one silicone anti-slip battery mat. In this bag, we get in two of these landing pads, four standoffs and all the necessary bolt and screws. In this bag we get in the top and the bottom plate, the width is 2 millimeters. This is the battery protector, it's going to sit underneath the battery to protect it of course. These are the camera mounts, they are going to be located on the sides of the quadcopter. This is the top plate of the quadcopter. And on this mount you can place the VTX or the flight controller, so it's going to be in the middle of the quadcopter. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start assembling this frame. So first I'm going to start with assembling the lower part. It should be pretty easy. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to follow these instructions just to lay the arms on the sides. Put this lower plate in the middle and then use this plate in order to hold the arms together. So let's get to work. I just put the bottom part, which is the 4-in-1 ESC. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to place the motors and solder them to the ESC. By the way, it was very hard to place it. I had to struggle with it and I almost ruined one of these screws. I recommend that you should a couple of extra ones because I was barely able to put it in place. I actually had to use a plier in order to get it to place, that's why I have a little bit of scratches, but this is not the end of the world. Hopefully the rest of the build will go smooth. Place all the motors. Make sure to use the longer screws. There are two types of screws with it that come with it motor, so use the longer ones. I also put the standoffs and I also soldered these wires to the 4-in-1 ESC. And the next thing I'm going to do I'm going to solder the wires from the motors to the wires on the board. Since the 4-in-1 ESC does not have any BAC out, we'll have to solder a wire to the bat and to the ground and connect it to the sides of the racer cube to the V+. Plus and the V minus. Since it has a built-in PDB, we just have to solder it to these pads. Before connecting it to the quadcopter, just flash it with the latest version of Betaflight. What you have to do, you have to just short these boot pins while connecting to the USB and then just load the firmware. You're gonna use the Aspiracing F3 and just flash firmware. You can see right now there is no response from bootloader because I haven't showed the boot pads when connecting it. After When you do it, you are going to be fine. When you flash in the new version, make sure to flash the Aspiracin F3 EVO, not the Aspiracin F3, otherwise it's not going to work. Now, you can see, connected it to the flight controller and it is working fine. That's good. The next thing we need to do is to place the camera and I also need to find place for the video transmitter. I just realized that the USB ports are located here on the front and the camera is going to sit here. And this is very very poorly designed because after you put the camera you won't have any access to the USB port. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to just rotate it to the left which means the USB are going to be here and still this is the camera connector. I will just have to connect it. I think it's a better idea than just to place it the way it is because again, blocking the USB port is not a very good idea and you probably want to flash new versions and to change configurations. So RaceQ <laughs> didn't really think it through. So this is what I will have to do. And after that, I will configure it on Betaflight that the direction of the flight controller has been changed.
place the top cover and next thing I need to do is to connect the wires from the camera to the board. So eventually I decided to go with the TBS HV video transmitter because it was much more compact and it fit on the back of the quadcopter. And also I soldered the XT60 connector to the battery. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to configure it on the beta flight and also I need to bind it to the Taranis. In order to bind the receiver, you will have to put the Taranis on mode D8, channel 1 to 8, hit the bind and then connect the battery while pressing the button that is located here. So you'll have to press it and then connect the battery. You will also get telemetry and the RSSI will be broadcasted as default on channel 9. So you can see the RSSI on the OSD. One thing after I connected it, the, now the OSD is not working so we'll have to configure it through a minimal OSD configurator. So the total weight without the battery is 302 grams, so it's pretty light. I'm pretty happy with the build. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will post a test flight in the next few days. So see you on my next videos. Goodbye.